friend commissioned me to make a knife display case for her husband's birthday. This is a story about that. She had sent me a picture of something she liked but said, I'll leave all the small details up to you. My favorite type of commission. I pulled a stick of walnut from my stash and laid out the pieces I'd need before I started milling to make sure I could get everything while still avoiding knots and defects. I headed over to the jointer to flatten one face, then the planer to get a parallel flat face on the other side. I remarked the lengths I would need, then broke the boards into more manageable pieces with the circular saw and headed back to the jointer. I jointed a straight edge and finally headed over to the table saw to rip my stock into what would become the case sides and back. The width of the cabinet was determined by how wide this particular stock was after the milling process. This board was right around 7 inches, so I marked the center along its thickness and went to the bandsaw to resaw the piece in half to make a 14 inch book match. After the bandsaw, I sent the pieces through the planer to remove any bandsaw marks and make sure they were the exact same thickness. I've found the key to making flat panels is a good glue line and an appropriate amount of clamping pressure. If you clamp too hard, the panel will start to cup or bow, and I also like to clamp from the top and the bottom. While that was drying, I started on the joinery for the case. I bought this dovetail jig for the drawer boxes on the shaker dresser, and I thought I would get use out of it again. After cutting a test joint and some scrap, I went at my case sides, making sure to carefully label each corner with A through D and which boards are the tail boards and the inside bases of each board. With my back panel dry, I could cut the grooves to house it. I cut a kerf in all of the case parts, making sure to go through the end of a tail so it would be hidden by the socket of the corresponding board once assembled. Before moving the fence, I cut a kerf in a small piece of scrap, then moved the fence over and cut another kerf and tested the fit of my groove on the back panel. Once I had a good fit, I could cut all the grooves in the insides of my case parts. Even with my test piece, the groove was a little snug over the full width and length of the panel, so I grabbed my smoothing plane to fine tune it. Working on the back side of the panel, I planed the panel to fit the groove. This is similar to how a traditional drawer bottom would be fit. Once all the pieces fit together well, I pre-sanded the inside faces, then spritzed water on them to raise the grain, then sanded again. This should hopefully eliminate more sanding to the inside of the case once finish is applied. The picture the client sent me didn't show the joinery, but looked clean and simple when looked at from the side view. I thought I would keep in that same theme. I wanted to employ half-blind dovetails, but put the tails on the top and bottom of the case so you couldn't see them unless you were looking for them. Now, orienting the joint this way doesn't offer the strength of the conflicting geometry of the tails being pulled on, like, say, in a drawer box. So this isn't really offering any more strength than, say, a box joint, but with the amount of glue surface and the low stress on the piece, it should outlast all of us. With the case assembly glued up, I could work on the glass panel door. I ripped some stock down to make up my styles and rails. I recently had to match a door profile on some existing cabinets for a client and picked up this style and rail bit set. I've heard them referred to as cope and stick bits as well. Normally I would have just made a mission style door utilizing my table saw, but I had this bit set and it makes really fast work when making any sort of panel door. It's just an elegant door. The first bit puts a groove and round over on the piece I dialed in the fit on a piece of scrap. Both the styles and rails get this treatment. Then the second bit cuts the corresponding tenon and cove on the ends of the rails to cut the opposite profile of the first bit. It's a pretty slick system.
If this were a regular panel door at this point during glue up, I would add either a quarter inch floating panel or a raised panel on the inside and clamp it up. But this door is getting glass, which takes an extra step. Back to work on the case. I'm using a French cleat to mount the case to the wall, so I grabbed a piece of stock and scribed how thick the piece needed to be to fit on the back side of the back panel. I cut close to my line at the bandsaw and fine-tuned the fit with a smoothing plane. I seem to have lost the footage of me ripping the piece in half on a 45 degree bevel, but I did that at the table saw, then glued one of the halves to the back of the case at the top. If you don't know what a French cleat is, just do a quick search if you are confused right now. I wanted to add a magnetic catch to keep the door from swinging open freely. Since this was a case to display knives, I thought it was a cool idea to incorporate some knife steel into the piece. I grabbed a piece of 1075 carbon steel and cut off a small piece and cleaned it up at my belt grinder. I could have used a piece of mild steel, but it's the little details like this on commission work that I really like to incorporate. I used a marking knife to transfer the layout of the steel onto the frame and grabbed a quarter inch chisel. This is essentially a very shallow mortise. I move a little away from my line and chop down, then march forward and make another chop, working my way towards the other side. Clean out the chips and do it again until I'm at my final depth. This is a very traditional way to chop a mortise, but seemed the fastest for such a delicate one. Once that was cut, I mixed up some epoxy and pressed the steel into the mortise. Next up was the hinges. I needed to mortise the hinges in, so I traced the outline with a marking knife. This is my first time using Brusso hardware, and while they are pricey, I definitely see what the hype is all about. They just feel nice. They don't know I'm saying that, I just thought I'd share my initial impressions. For these mortises, I used a small trim router with a spiral bit set to the thickness of the hinge and routed out the waist, staying away from my lines. Then I worked back to my lines with a sharp chisel. With the glue on the door dry, I took it to my router table. With glass doors, it's a good idea to make the glass removable, in case the glass ever breaks or scratches, so I turned what was once a groove into a rabbit using a rabbiting bit riding the bearing on the front inside face of the door. Still focused on the door, I made the mortises for the other side of the hinges. These hinges come with brass screws, but brass is fairly soft, so they also come with a stainless steel pilot screw. I made the pilot holes, and the stock I used was a little thinner than the screws were long, so I had to grind the tips off the brass screws, then did a dry fit. On the inside of the door, I made a shallow hole and installed a rare earth magnet opposite the steel catch in the frame. Now I needed a way to display the knives. I set my drill press table to five degrees, then at the table saw I ripped some stock at three eighths of an inch. I wanted four columns of pegs, so I made four rips at three eighths of an inch, but I kept track of each rip so I could turn them on their side and essentially book match the rips so the two strips in the left of the cabinet would mirror the two strips on the right. Then I squared across all the pieces every two inches. I bored a quarter inch hole on a five degree bias at each mark. I had laid out tape on the inside of the cabinet to try to mitigate any glue squeeze out, then laid long beads of wood glue with little dabs of CA glue for an instant bond. I set the strips in place, and then I used the drinking straw tip I am so fond of to help clean out the squeeze out. While that was drying, I went back and squared out the corners of the door left by the round rabbiting bit, and with my little bandsaw I cut quarter inch walnut dowels down to 48 one and a quarter inch pegs. I tapered both ends of each peg with a little pencil sharpener to make them easier to insert into the holes. Instead of applying finish to each one, I put them all in a container and doused them with Danish oil, then pulled them out and wiped them down and threw them into a separate container. Off camera, I sanded the door, then applied the same Danish oil finish to it and the case. After the finish dried, I used some silicone caulk on the inside of the rabbit, set the piece of glass in, and ran another bead on the backside, sandwiching the glass between silicone. 
With the finish dry and the glass set, I reattached the hardware and started wrapping this one up. A design like this with such a simple form, I try to think what I can do to add the extra special touches. A book matched back panel, a profiled panel door, quality hardware, dovetails, and knife steel for the catch. Just things that make the piece a little more special. I really like how elegant the case turned out, and the strips on the inside with those bookmatched, almost tiger stripes turned out really cool. And I've already heard from the birthday boy, and he loves it too. Let me know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching.